This week, we've seen a big jump in AI agents with the introduction of background or asynchronous agents. So all the big companies like Microsoft, GitHub, Cursor, uh, OpenAI have all released these agents that we can assign issues to. They go ahead and run those in the background. We can review and then via a pull request, merge them back into our code base. Does that sound like complete disaster? Maybe. Do we really want to let a team of autonomous agents run away with our code base? Is this a viable way forward? So I'm gonna check it out. I'm going to actually run a setup for VS Code and with GitHub Copilot. If you're trying to understand all this AI development stuff to figure out how you can build a product 10x faster than previously possible, definitely check out the community. There's about 300 plus people in there learning and developing together and showcasing their work. So we'd love to have you in there. So on Monday, we got the release of the GitHub Copilot coding agent. So how is this anyway different from the existing GitHub Copilot? So if you think about it, GitHub Copilot is directly within VS Code. It's that little bar on the right hand side that we work with as a pair programmer. But now we're entering a new way of working where we can actually go and assign Copilot in our GitHub repositories. So there's two ways that you can work with GitHub Copilot in terms of assigning and running background agents. You can do it on the free tier. And then if you want to actually assign issues that like that we saw in the Microsoft build video, you need to pay for the Pro Plus tier. So let's take a look at how it works with a repository. I just wanna create a quick issue to say, let's add a new model for Docker setup to say it's coming soon. So if we click in and just see what this issue is, I basically have an issue title and then I have a description. So in this new world of using agents, our issue description almost acts kind of like a prompt. So over here on the right hand side, you can see that you can assign this to somebody. So let's just click assign and then I'm gonna click Copilot here, your AI pair programmer. So let's just click on that. So now it's assigned to Copilot. So you can see it's gone and given us a history of how it's working. I've reviewed the structure, I've created a Docker setup. Copilot started working on behalf of Rob Shock six minutes ago, then Versal went and deployed a preview. So we can go and view that deployment. Yeah, and here we go. It says Docker setup coming next month. Learn how to containerize applications, Docker fundamentals, microservices, Docker compose. That's pretty much exactly it. Okay, that's perfect. That's what we wanted. Okay, so all the work has been done. It's given me a preview with Vercel, which is great. I just hit merge, pull request, and then it probably just switched deployments. So if I go and check out my Vercel history here and see all the different deployments that are running, so you can see that basically we had these two different previews that were done by Copilot and we were able to preview them to see if they looked okay and then we could actually merge them back in as well. So that is uh, pretty cool. Now again, this was a very small fix that we're doing here, but uh, you can see the power of this. Here are my key takeaways for this new way of working with agents. So number one, it's a really good workflow for keeping control of agents. If you think about working in Git, using issues, using pull requests, using feature branches, this is the kind of stuff I teach in my course in how you keep a rein on an AI agent and keep control around sometimes the chaos of them generating or changing code that you don't want to. Second off, it's only really good for kind of simplistic tasks at the moment. I was able to assign little things that uh, I just want to have done that I know aren't going to be very hard or aren't operating across multiple files or aren't going to end up in a load of spaghetti code. But I think as time goes on, as testing gets better, as the infrastructure and tooling and the models get smarter, we're going to be able to increasingly give these agents uh, autonomous abilities to develop out our code and we can trust them. And then again, we don't have to trust them completely because we'll see those pull requests come in. We can review, add comments and get them to change them. Okay, you need really good descriptions and prompts. So when you're creating those issues and you're writing those descriptions, you almost need to think of them as how you would write a prompt to an AI because that's how it's going to be taken. They're going to read the issue description and they're gonna say, okay, what exactly do you want done? So I'd be very prescriptive or descriptive 
in your descriptions when you're creating these issues or requests that you're sending through. You need to think about it in terms of prompt engineering. Next is you'll want to iterate with comments. So oftentimes when you get a pull request, you might want to suggest changes. Usually it doesn't happen that it's accepted straight away. You can actually add inline comments, have those sent back to the model to mull on before it comes back with some new changes. I think if I wanted to move very quickly, I'd still just run two local agents working on a code base. I have more control, I can see what's happening. But as the tooling improves, as the efficiency improves, as the models improves, this could be a completely new workflow for a, a lot of us. So essentially, that's my final tip. Get this set up, practice a little bit. This is the future of leverage. I think as a starting point, what you might wanna do if you wanna become this 10X, 100X developer is level one, just start with working with agents, the kind of stuff that I teach in my course and community. Level two, start working with two agents together, really understand Git features, merging, rebasing, how it all kind of plays together, pull requests, and then you're in a position where you can potentially run multiple agents together. But again, I state, if you're starting out, if you're just getting into this, you don't need to do it. It's just a view on where the future might be going.